are discussing management now and beyond. In this, in our last lecture, we were discussing globalization, the global organizations and workforce development and I was sharing with you some of the experience and recent uh, research trends in India based on some of the studies which we have conducted uh, here at IIT Delhi. And now we move on to discuss uh, the concept of psychological empowerment. We have talked about empowerment in some of the earlier lectures and today we are discussing empowerment, one of the studies that we have conducted on empowerment as an antecedent to organizational commitment in Indian managers. So, this study attempts to measure psychological empowerment and organizational commitment in a sample of 607 managers of global corporations drawn from various organizations in India. They are grouped in terms of the technology they adopt, the, the organizations, the technology they adopt. The study attempts to predict the psychological empowerment through organizational commitment and the results of this study support that there is a close relationship between, uh, uh, between uh, the uh, implications of the Indian industry and the HRD okay, and then there is a close relationship between psychological empowerment and performance. Yes, that has not been here. Yeah. Psychological empowerment and performance. Strategic HR roles in Indian organizations also need attention and so in another study we have explored the strategic HR roles in India and need for HRD managers development. They also call for training in the HR roles. This study was conducted on a sample of 600 managers falling in the in di different you know industrial units, nine various nine uh, industrial units and the study seeks to probe HR line managers perception of the strategic HR roles and the status of the strategic HR roles. And uh, here the impact of the background variables has also been discussed with the strategic HR roles and the descriptive statistics correlation coefficients and the bivariate analysis have been done. We have discussed these methods earlier in our uh, chapter on uh, methodology, yes. So, I am not repeating that again. So, findings of this study indicate that there is no difference in the perception of the strategic partner roles in the managers of public sector and multinational firms. Yes, there are various types of roles that we play and we did not find any difference. However, there was a significant difference in the perception of HR managers and the line managers. The results provide support for strategic HR roles which are of moderate quality found only in the managers of the IT sector. When we uh, say nine different sectors that includes IT is one of the sectors where we have collected data, the other sectors being pharmaceutical, chemical, uh, telecommunications and so on. In another study, the framework of strategic, uh, uh, strategic HRM, uh, HRM dimensions, yes, human resource management dimensions have been uh, tested empiric empirically <coughs> through the Indian organizations as perceived by the Indian managers. The organizational analysis has been presented on two basis to different sets of issues. The nature of ownership that is public sector, private sector and multinational corporations both Indian and global. 
In fact, Indian global when we say Indian organizations going global and global organizations coming to India. So, so that is what you know we mean and type of technology which is essentially uh, representative uh, of the in, uh, various industries drawn randomly from the national capital region of India. You understand? Yes, around Delhi, national capital region of India. And this study uh, is based on, on the primary and secondary sources of information and based on a survey research design and triangular uh, results have been found and these have been attempted developing case studies based on personal interviews and the secondary sources of data. We have discussed earlier what is primary source and what is the secondary source of data and earlier in November one of the one of the lectures on methodology again. So, the results have been attempted and developing case studies based on the personal interviews and secondary sources of data. And the study analyzed the relationship between strategic HRM dimensions of strategic HR roles, organizational learning capability, psychological empowerment and organizational commitment in the global uh, organizations, private and public organizations in India. Yes, that is a, a study uh, which was done in 19, uh, I said to about uh, 2 years ago, yeah. No, 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 not that old, it is a study, it is about 2 years, so 2005 you can say. Yes, earlier also people have done you know, such studies. Prediction of uh, organizational commitment using strategic HRM dimensions, strategic HR roles, organizational learning capability and psychological empowerment have been done and this study supports the prediction uh, as found significant differences on the impact of individual level contingency variables on strategic HRM dimensions. Individual level contingency variable, yes, there could be an organizational level contingency variables, there could be individual level contingency variables. So, this, this result pertains to the individual level contingency variables. We also observed significant difference in the perception of strategic human resource uh, uh, dimensions in public sector and private sector organizations. So, if so there are differences because of the different types of organizational culture and looking at the prediction of firm uh, performance we found that the strategic human resource management dimensions uh, which relate to HR roles, organizational learning, psychological empowerment and commitment are the predictors of performance of the firm uh, of the performance of the sample that means the firms have been taken in as the main main major samples. So, what we are trying to say that if organizational culture provides for some of these uh, possibilities then the performance uh, of the organization will also be better that is what you know uh, we can sort of say we can conclude from number of these studies which we have done. Then the HR roles and organizational learning capability. In this study, uh, the focus is on empirical analysis of strategic HR roles and organizational learning capability uh, of the line and HR firm perform managers in the, uh, the uh, various, various firms and the performance is further analyzed in terms of the uh, sample size which is about 640 in this case, 640 managers in India. So, uh, the standardized questionnaires we had used and uh, the uh, as tool for data collection and we found that the perception of the 
variables okay they uh, and and uh, they link you know with the data collection the statistical results indicate that the correlation coefficients uh, were were generally significant most of in most of the cases and positive for the variables and sub variables of strategic hr roles and organizational learning cap capabilities we have also done discriminant function analysis there which is reflected in the line and staff uh, managers they differed significantly in their perception of both variables and the step wise regression analysis indicated that both the variables of strategic hr roles and organizational learning capabilities predict firm performance basically we are looking at firm performance the effectiveness profitability survival and growth so some of these factors become important so far as indian organizations are concerned then uh, in earlier one of the chapters we have discussed about workforce diversity and there also we were emphasizing that there is uh, there is need for hrd in india and in fact we need to invest a lot in hrd in this study which uh, i had also talked about uh, some studies on hr on workforce uh, diversity in my uh, discussion on the diversity earlier but here one of the important strategic in, uh, challenges facing the organizations today is that valuing the differences and adapting its diverse workforce so over the uh, past few years we find diversity at the workplace has become a major challenge for many organizations because the character of their workforce composition is changing see the world is changing and people are changing their minds are changing their aspirations and expectations are changing and so and and also with globalization we have the cultural changes also workforce diversity is one of the challenging questions which we have discussed in many other references you know in the earlier discussions some of the uh, the issues that we have also dealt with are that women the elder or the older workforce diverse educational backgrounds different uh, specifications and now they are emerging as a workforce in large numbers particularly women we have devoted uh, two lectures you know on uh, women and gender issues as a challenge for managers so so earlier part we had discussed that so once again you know i'm referring uh, to that because we are coming towards the conclusion of the course so once again uh, sort of a recap you can say therefore the uh, composition of today's workforce is very much different than the past and uh, and uh, the organizations are also becoming different and more perhaps you know we can say heterogeneous uh, in some sense we can say uh, in the form of gender culture religion religious backgrounds age groups educational qualifications and so on and so this assumes the relevance uh, uh, relevance in the indian uh, industrial uh, context also because in india even though in terms of industrialization we have entered um, much late but today as we stand you know we are becoming uh, becoming a real uh, i'll say a major uh, performance in the field of industrialization particularly in certain sectors and so now we have no other choice than to see that diversity is really taken care of i mean with great uh, great importance so uh, in this study we carried out uh, an inform uh, th this is a study uh, some part of this i had mentioned in my diversity lecture once again and i'm talking about uh, this a study which was conducted in an information technology company and uh, which has uh, offices you know in new delhi 
uh, the head office perhaps uh, is in New Delhi or the office is in New Delhi or many other cities in the, in, in the, uh, in the uh, various metros, various uh, larger cities in India and the organization has 300 employees and mix of diversity uh, in many sense. And so, the study considered within the survey research uh, method a framework, a factor analyzed questionnaire was developed to measure the perception of the employees on the HRM issues and was uh, developed in order to elicit the responses from the employees of the, of, um, the selected organization. In this study, we had just uh, taken one organization because we thought that better control will be there and that is why we did not go to many IT sector organizations and uh, since we had permission to con conduct this study, we have, we have um, conducted this study only in one organization, but that might have implications for other IT uh, companies as well. So, the, uh, the HRD variables of this study are the organizational strategy, job design, enrichment, managerial effectiveness, organizational commitment, empowerment, team spirit, reward and recognition system, competency, upgradation, organizational values, equity and rewards and salary, cost consciousness, performance management incentive schemes and resources and out of this in this analysis we had taken the diversity variables like levels in the organization, hierarchy, place of work, length of service, total work experience, age, gender, education, departmental affiliation. Are you getting uh, the, the study that I am trying to talk about? Taking these diversity variables and some of those HR variables which I have just shown to you, we tried to see whether people differ with, uh, with regard to these variables. And uh, in this analysis, we found this study reveals that the diverse group of employees have significant differences in their perception of HRM issues and the HRD needs, that is very important. When we are trying to, uh, trying to actually uh, have HRD as a movement, we have to see the HRD needs of the employees and so that relates to the diversity at the place of work. There's a, there appears you know, a positive correlation between the perception of HRD issues and the diversity variables in this study. Uh, and uh, then we find that the variables also have, uh, we have looked at you know the prediction uh, values of uh, these variables in, in terms of statistical analysis. And the uh, predictors of perception of HRM issues are, are, uh, the, uh, are some of these like they highlighted the importance of giving strategic uh, uh, focus you know to the HRD issues and the roles of designing and implementing HRD strategies and achieve organizational effectiveness and the competitive advantage. In other words, what we are trying to say from the earlier study that the HRD is, uh, is the need of the hour and we have to see because people at different levels, you know, at different gender, different class, they differ in their perception. We have to see that they should become beneficial to the organization and beneficial to themselves in order to actually achieve the uh, better performance and the competitive advantage that your firm perhaps will achieve. So, we just cannot uh, can't say that, okay, there is one rule and there is just one guideline and that should apply to everyone. We have to use the uh, contingency perhaps you know um, approach to analyze these situations in order to really optimize on the human uh, efficiency, human productivity. Yes.
So from here I take you to the issue of gender. The issue of gender, this we have discussed earlier also two lectures on gender and women at the place of work. Also in diversity we have discussed that and uh, you must be thinking that why so much emphasis. The reason is that that is a new uh, that is a new workforce all over the world, but much so you know in India because with our development our globalization you find that women have become become so important in our place of work. Important when I say important in terms of the number ok many women are working here I am not saying important you know in any other sense ok. The role of uh, women in Indian, Indian society that has changed that is what you know I am trying to say over the years and uh, this is from the Vedic era the values have changed. So, the role, uh, roles have also changed and from the Vedic era to modern times and male and male and female uh, couple mentoring uh, the contemporary concept of Vedic themes this has been forgotten and then gradually we have make made a supremacy which, which was evolved you know over the years you know gradually that has become uh, different now. However, in today's time women have really developed in you know, confidence and as a result of socio cultural changes they have developed the potential to contribute to the development. So, so we have to look at this issue in uh, at the place of organization as as one of the issues you know of development. So, the heart of development process is social change. In our discussion on social change also the change management, management of change we have discussed also on the issue of uh, development. So, the heart of development process is the social change, education, values and environmental factors. Women are entering the formal work scenario as active partners in today's global economy and they have made significant contributions in the areas of agriculture, rural development, primary education, higher education and research and now of course, the industrialization leading to development of India. And when we say industrialization women are working you know in a big way in many of the industries uh, and uh, many uh, of the organizations, uh, many service industries and many other sectors. So, women's empowerment becomes important as a concept which we have to see when we are looking at, at uh, the, the whole uh, issue of management now and beyond. Women's empowerment is constituted uh, uh, in terms of a number of micro and macro level factors and some of the macro level dimensions are the socio economic factors, education, employment and health care. In democracy nut and, the, and the nutritional status and the social values. Some of these factors are also emphasized in the human development uh, index and the gender development. In fact, it is human development index. However, the success of women needs further you know develop uh, and the development of skill of women, their knowledge, their awareness, opportunities, social support and motivation these are some of the, the, the issues in the success of women which management has to realize, recognize and perhaps emphasize create conditions so that women can really come out with the best results possible. 
Entrepreneurship is also an important concept in this regard and this leads to the economic empowerment on the one hand and development of high self-esteem, confidence and intrinsic motivation on the other spheres of life. Entrepreneurship when we are talking about this uh, refers to women of course, women get em empowered you know when they become uh, entrepreneurs, but entrepreneurship generally also is very important uh, for um, India's development. So, empowerment of women, a research scenario when I am just planning very quickly I will go through this because part of that we have already done uh, in some of the earlier uh, lectures. So, in this, uh, in this sector studies uh, have been presented briefly to def develop a scenario regarding what, why and how of women's empowerment. And about this I have, uh, I have touched upon in earlier also. So, the study presents perception of 450 professional women about the resources for the work and the analysis presented here. This relates to different family income groups and in fact, the, the tables are, I am just very quickly I am putting you know this table that why people uh, or women are working, the reason for that, okay, you can see uh, is not that very interesting to note that uh, how many people feel that work is suited to my qualification and how many people, uh, sorry, how many women feel that the circumstances force them to take up the job, how many women feel that it is for their job satisfaction, how many women feel that it is the friends or the social influence and how many women feel that doing job is in fashion. So, you, you can see that this is a survey of women professionals and you can see that maximum number of women would like to enter as a workforce because they feel that work is suited to their qualification. Is not that the alternatives I seen very interesting and this is what it is in India today. Then uh, also uh, some other uh, aspects uh, that um, I had listed here on becoming uh, financially sound, the other aspects, the job has promotional avenues and it gives me identity, this is the utilization of time or any other reason. I thought you know this table I will show you because this is very interesting and gives us an uh, idea about women at the place of work and how they are feeling empowered if they are actually at the, um, they are working. In another study, that was one study, in another study this was uh, sponsored by the department of uh, science and technology, uh, government of India yes. Uh, and this in this we investigated, I got that uh, project and uh, uh, in that I was trying to investigate the op occupational choices of women with science and technology education and in this study 300 women architects, doctors and engineers participated and the study revealed that the self evaluation of work uh, suggests that 62 percent of the respondents perceive themselves as good performers, 23 perceive them, themselves as the excellent performers and only 9 percent feel that they are not good at performance and this reveals that working there uh, like there is a high work motivation among women. You can see that only 9 percent feel that they are not good performers, but all others are feeling at least average or very good performer. These are the women architects, scientists. Uh, uh, the uh, engineers and uh, doctors, not scientists. Okay, another study I've done with scientists. The, in here, only these three professional groups. 
So, you can you can see the based on these studies in yet another study of 321 Indian milk middle class managers. Uh, this uh, we conducted to find out whether male or female managers differ significantly in the empower in the empowering leadership perception. And it was observed that the mean value of the managers was 1.7 whereas, for women managers it was 2.8 even though the number of cases you can see are, are uh, lesser. But even then the mean value of empowering leadership we find that this is more uh, uh, for women. So, the uh, so the managers with empowering leadership attitudes have also the positive egalitarian attitude. This, this was another finding you know from the same study. So, you find that gender becomes an important factor and how women themselves perceive uh, perceive uh, their work life and they would certainly like to contribute to the national development and their own development in many ways. So, so it is time for us you know to gear up that now and beyond that uh, whether we like it or no we have to make uh, sure that uh, we have um, a, a society uh, and the, the organizations which take care of this factor. Then we come to the issue of innovation. Uh, in this study, we have attempted to empirically analyze the effects of employer perception of innovation initiatives taken by an organization on empowering leadership style adopted by the managers. It is proposed in this study that if employees perceive organizational uh, organizational climate with encouraging innovation and creativity, then people would be encouraged to adopt an empowering leadership style towards their juniors. So, in this, this uh, study and this paper, we have of course, relied on the uh, both, both quantitative uh, data as well as you know the <coughs> qualitative data. So, the measures of employee perception and empowering leadership style and the qualitative reports given by the managers on an open ended questionnaire regarding the two variables. The quantitative data was subjected to correlation coefficient ANOVA post hoc analysis and qualitative data and was subject and was analyzed through also the content analysis. These are the methods, these are the methods of analysis where we are trying to look at the innovation and say the culture work culture in terms of the empowering leadership style. And the results of this study suggest that the perception of organizational climate in terms of innovation and learning initiatives are correlated with empowering leadership style. We have seen earlier in our one of the uh, discussions that empowering leadership style is the need of the hour and uh, so here we are trying to relate the same concept to the innovation, the issue of innovation. The results of this study also point out are the differences between the manufacturing and the banking sector. In this study we had many sectors and so in this study we compared the banking and the manufacturing sector and we found that uh, there were differences in these sectors. And the content analysis of the interviews of the senior managers reveals that the reasons for low innovation in, uh, initiative by employees in the manufacturing sector and the higher degree of innovation initiative in the banking sector uh, is seen. Well, you can see the, in the kind of a, uh, work designs that they have and so where is the role for actually using your creativity and innovation at the place of work. Well, but th this is just one of the studies that we have we have uh, conducted and this needs you know 
lot of uh, uh, we should say uh, replications and uh, perhaps we have to repeat it number of times before we really integrate that into literature. But nevertheless, uh, that does give us an idea about uh, that organizational uh, setup, organization, uh, technology that also makes a difference in how much uh, innovative people could be in a particular organization. Then we come to uncertainty, which is emerging as an important factor and which forces management to encourage creativity and empowering culture. So, sometimes when the organization is, is, un, is under uncertainty, volatile environment, then possibility of encouraging perhaps the innovation and empowerment might become difficult for managers. The results of this study uh, are also suggesting uh, that the strategic role HR policies, this may be, be important in terms of innovational uh, linkages and uh, innovation linked uh, incentives in fostering the cultural innovation and empowerment. Yes, are there any questions on this? Yes. So, so, we move on to the issue of flexibility now. This concept I am taking uh, as, as the concluding remarks that we have in management now and beyond that we have no choice you know uh, than to look at some of these variables, some of these issues um, in, the in the future now and of course, in the future. Uh, so, flexibility becomes an important factor. In a study of an international organization, a study of flexibility, uh, we have done this study of flexibility, which revealed that most of the managers preferred a flexi time system and the flexibility in their areas of their work. It is so difficult to implement that perhaps, you know, in all types of organizations, but in this study which we conducted. Uh, this international organization obviously, all the global corporations operating in India. So, uh, we are not talking about uh, that we have gone anywhere else and conducted study, all these studies have been done in India, the international organizations also operating in India. So, uh, flexibility becomes an important factor and of course, participative management we have devoted uh, perhaps two or three lectures. So, empowerment through participation, this again is an issue. Participation uh, in one of the studies, we found that participation in profit making and non profit making textile sectors, uh, this has been uh, analyzed. And in this study, we attempted to investigate the employees empowerment in terms of various factors, uh, which are related to participative management attitude, emphasizing on participative management as a job design strategy. The study is based on three groups of variables that is participative management variables, job related variables and the background variables and which include position in the, uh, the, the various uh, positions in the organization, age, education, qualification, work experience, etcetera. The, the sample included 300 employees consisting of managers, trade union leaders and workers and also the experience the, and the experience of participative management uh, were, uh, were uh, studied and they were, they were members of various committees at the time of this investigation. So, so, so you can see that the trade union leaders, they were the members and the workers, they were members of some participative management committee or some decision making committee at the time of this study was conducted. So, we try to uh, try to find out whether whether participative management makes an impact on the, their uh, work performance, their attitudes. Uh, the sample were collected uh, 
from 10 units of public sector uh, organization uh, situated at Coimbatore in South India, the textile corporation. And in this, uh, this or these organizations constitute the composite and non-composite units and profit making and non-profit making categories and data were collected through a set of questionnaires which includes the background information, participative management variables and related variables. And the analysis has been done using bivariate, uh, univariate and multivariate analysis. I do not need to explain that once again, we have we had touched upon that earlier. And so, the, this study reveals that there is a positive relationship between information sharing uh, understanding and uh, understanding and the meaning of workers participation, the attitude towards workers participation in all the three groups of the respondents and the findings show a significant relationship associated with attitude towards participative management. So, we found that participative management is a very good job design strategy. Yeah. Further, we found that the attitude towards participative management is positively related to job characteristics, perception, group atmosphere, organizational commitment and work involvement of the respondents. Work involvement? Yes, of the respondents. And also we found that group atmosphere, education, work involvement, these were significant, significant predictors of the attitude towards participative management. Whereas, participative attitude variables organizational commitment and quality of work life predicted the differences in the profit making and the uh, loss, loss making companies. This is important that if, a com if we find that there is significant difference that means, we can use some of these, uh, some of these uh, developmental uh, perhaps you know issues to make the loss making companies as profit making companies using participative management strategy. In this study, we also found that there is a significant difference among the managers, trade union leaders and workers in terms of their attitude towards participative management. Yes, there is a, so there are different levels and they also differ in their attitude towards participative management. Then we come to uh, the issue of top management commitment and HRD. See many a times we uh, have never paid an attention to this issue, but in one of the studies we tried to find out whether top management commitment makes any difference uh, in the overall functioning of the organization on the issue of HRD. So, in spite of rising the need and the importance of discipline, the evidence and its applicability at the workforce uh, are not many, uh, uh, not, not really developed and developing in the countries, these are not really very uh, much you know emphasized and it is precisely this inconsistency that in the application of the status of HRD that has attracted attention and provided the impetus uh, of some of these research studies. The uh, premise is that once these focal issues of thoroughly uh, sort of understood and accorded, uh, accorded uh, importance are seen, we will perhaps be operating, uh, these will be the operating foundations for various management intervention practices to produce consistent results. Yes, so the top management commitment we are looking at. So, the endeavor, why did we conduct this study? The endeavor is also to spot the specific problems being faced by the organizations in their implementation and 
they suggest you know some kind of a palatable solutions. So, uh, we in this study we took 8 uh, such factors which were identified in this study and data were collected through a set of questionnaires which include separate measures of each of the variables and the sample comprised of 160 respondents and they are executives and uh, a very senior cadre line top and HR functionaries from 20 engineering organizations situated in the national capital region of India and both parametric and non parametric statistics have been used for this analysis. The results of this study suggest that there existed positive relationship between HRM effectiveness and the top management commitment to HR functions and the, the, the findings also suggest that, that the improvement uh, in the level of commitment of top functionaries towards HR initiatives is important. Okay. And so, in this study it was evident, yeah, in this study uh, we found that the HR, uh, the overall HR effectiveness uh, relates to top management commitment also. Yes. So, there exists a positive relationship between HRM effectiveness and well uh, defined we can say HR policy framework that an organization might have that is the standardization of HR, HR functions in an organization and the strategic integration of the HR with business. See otherwise what happens that sometimes the, uh, the HR and the business uh, these are not integrated. If we have, we have to integrate the both okay, for which the top management commitment becomes extremely important only then because we have seen earlier that human resource is the actual important resource and you can get the work done only through human resource. So, for which the top management commitment becomes very important which sometimes you know we uh, which we tend to perhaps you know ignore. Okay. So, HR has to be taken up you know as an important uh, factor uh, today and also in the years to come. So, the issue, so this, uh, this, this is uh, again you know an important uh, result for us and then we are looking at the issue of performance appraisal systems for productivity and quality research. Productivity and quality research become extremely important and uh, productivity and quality research addresses the multivariate multidisciplinary aspects and uh, the concept uh, becomes extremely important. One such aspect is the people uh, dimension which includes the performance appraisals. <coughs> one of the uh, studies, uh, one of the papers that uh, we have published we found that the performance appraisal system in some Indian organizations uh, we, have, we have analyzed and analyzing data from 120 managers selected randomly, we found that uh, there are individual differences in the perception of performance appraisals. Then uh, also uh, emotional intelligence that has become an important factor and uh, emotional intelligence and MBTI profile. These days we are talking about HR in terms of uh, developing you know, certain qualities which we have discussed one of the earlier opening lectures that it becomes uh, a, an important factor. So, as the knowledge of HR develops significantly and culturally uh, and perhaps culturally there appears an emergence of new paradigm emphasizing on the strategic HR issues where performance outcomes, goal achievements quality, productivity and maintain, uh, are maintained and achieved through different designs of HR systems. Emotional intelligence is one such concept highlighting this issue emphasizing on the diversity concept because 
you may be uh, emotionally more intelligent than perhaps some, someone else. Emotional intelligence is different than the intelligence, the concept of in intelligence that we had been discussing, discussing you know so far. Okay? So, uh, emotional uh, intelligence is the in among the employees has significant role to play in the selection, training, development uh, and participative management. However, there is a need to integrate emotional intelligence factor uh, with other factors too. And uh, when we are uh, talking about emotional intelligence, the profiles emerge from MBTI, Meyer Briggs, yes, yes, yes. So, uh, so uh, uh, tests may develop, you know, uh, uh, many types of profiles, and in this uh, particular research study, we have tried to put this, you know, uh, as as one of the investigations, and the case studies, uh, case studies uh, which we have developed, are from bank managers, doctors, public sector managers, and the private sector managers. It is observed that those lower and those who are higher in emotional intelligence have different personality profile type and as compared to those, uh, those on EQ when measured using MBTI scale. So, the, in this study we have implications for HR and work design. And this brings me uh, to a model based on these research studies, the model that I have developed you, you can see very carefully that we have looked at this model and uh, we are trying to integrate all the factors which we have discussed so far. And we are trying to say that if we create, uh, create an environment, if we create uh, a system where uh, managers are aware of these facts that some of the issues which we have discussed today, we can have the HRD inter interventions and we can have the development climate and organizational ecology becomes an extremely important factor for us, which will lead to ecological succession for us and which will finally lead to the development uh, and competitive advantage, better performance of organization. However, uh, before we close uh, today's lecture, we have to understand that we need uh, investment in HRD as an important factor, which we have not really uh, emphasized in, in some of the earlier lectures. When an organization tries to develop its HRD, there has to be a very formal way of looking at the HRD strategies and investment in HRD becomes extremely important, because that will lead to the organizational ecology and the ecological successions that an organization might have. In our next lecture, which will be our uh, concluding lecture on management now and beyond, we will look at some of the issues like quality, productivity, perhaps you know uh, uh, the uh, uh, some, some other collaborations and some other the financial issues and perhaps some interviews with, uh, with uh, some experienced and perhaps you know some personalities who really have made contributions in this area. So, we close today's lecture now. Thank you.